Okay guys, quick chicken update. So I took it out of its packaging, gave it a good rinse, and I just put salt all over it, um, inside and out, and I'm gonna leave it in the fridge for like 24 hours, and so I'll go ahead and cook it tomorrow whenever I get off work. If there's not enough time to cook it tomorrow when I get off work, then I'll do it the next day. I'm very excited, look at it. Okay, first of all, Mitzi is coughing because she's excited that I'm here. It's okay. Um, second, it is so hot outside. Oh my gosh. Um, I just got back from HEB. I had to get some veggies. Um, here's the inside of this bag. Um, and then this is like the stuff that I'm using for the chicken. I'm so excited. I'm roasting another chicken. I know I just said it's hot, but we got icy inside, bitches. Also, I found out that, um, you know, if you're having that fly problem, the gnat problem that a lot of us have been having in your place, you know, it's clean, whatever. Pour vinegar in your drains um, and leave it. It works. Like, leave it overnight. So good. They are, like, just vanishing. It's amazing. <laughs> Let's get into this. Okay, so I'm about as prepared as I can be <laughs> for roasting a chicken. Um, it is still in the fridge. And honestly, it could have hung out a little bit longer in the fridge. Um, however, I want to cook it today. So I am just getting some gloves on so that I can dry it. Yesterday is whenever I put the salt on here. So what I'm going to do is set some to the side so that I can grab it in a second um, and then take some as well. And I'm just going to dry the rest of it. The salt brings out a lot of moisture in the skin. And I'm leaving all of the bits of fat on here because I want them to Mitzi. I'm leaving all the bits of fat on here because I want them to cook down on the pan because I'm going to use the fat for the rest of the meal. And I'm just drying in this cavity. And the reason we want it so dry is so that it can create a nice crisp skin. And I'm actually going to dry the inside of the cavity a bit as well because I don't want this I don't want it to like steam from the inside necessarily with that much liquid. Great, so it's pretty dry now. Um, I'm just gonna do some finishing touches and then um, we'll go ahead and truss it. Well, fill it and then truss it <laughs> and then put it in the oven. Okay, I started doing this and then I was like, maybe I should show them. So I put a half a teaspoon of salt about. Um, I put like a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of these orange peel. half a teaspoon of thyme. And then I'm gonna try this sage today. This is some rubbed sage. Never really had dried sage before. The only time I've had sage is in gnocchi whenever we made it at school. And I got these little cups from work. They fell on the ground like the package was open and so I just took the ones that weren't like that were still in the package um and I uh just took them home and they were like what are you gonna do with them I'm like well I got permission obviously but they were like what are you gonna do I'm like you know I don't know I'll have to wait until I am feeling very innovative <laughs> 
So this is what I've decided after I almost spilled it all over myself. And this will just be really nice for the inside. It'll be very aromatic. Um, I just did some Italian seasoning. And then this is some lemon peel seasoning that I have in old Jeffree Star packaging. And then I'm actually gonna put a little bit of smoked paprika on the top. You know, we can't stay away, so. And then for the inside, I'm also gonna do a little quarter of this onion because the inside is not that big. <laughs> And then I'm gonna do half of this lemon. And then I'm gonna do the rest of this head of garlic. It's not too much. It's probably like, it's probably like half or so. I'm just cutting off the tippity tops. Cool, so I'm gonna be able to shove all of this in there with the seasonings. Great, so I'm gonna get the pan ready really quick and then we will do everything. I went ahead and cut a piece of twine and I set my um, heat to 450 on the oven. Um, this piece of twine is probably three, three and a half feet long. Okay, I'm always doing some kind of precarious thing whenever I'm like not filming. So there's a lot that I edit out. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of liquid in the pan that it was hanging out in the fridge, which is completely normal. So I'm gonna put this down the sink. But yeah, just in case you've never been to my channel before and you're watching this, um, I work in a warehouse for medical supplies. So I'm very lucky in the fact that if something is broken or like the packaging's broken, then I can take it home if my supervisor says yes, which is why I have gloves and all this stuff. Because I mean, I did used to buy it, but now I don't really need to, and I feel better because um, I'm not buying it, and I'm taking something that would have been wasted and using it. Okay, so that's good there. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the garlic. You don't want it to be too tight in here. I'm going to squeeze the lemon a bit. Um, so whenever you're putting things in here, they don't need to be like shoved in there. They just need to be kind of hanging out. Like hanging out as in chilling, not hanging out as in hanging out. Um, but yeah, so that's good on that part. I'll face you guys so you can see it. But yeah, it's kind of, it's just kind of loose in here. Whatever. Um, so here's the trussing. So I'm going to put these two sides in. Um, and a lot of this fat is going to melt out of here. So I'm just going to separate this just a little bit. Perfect. I just don't want this to be too tight in there. So I'm actually going to stick this right under here so that it will melt. I'm going to grab my string and I'm just going to go right under the bird. I'm gonna pull it tight like this. And then I'm gonna wrap each one just separately. Gross. Oops. Honestly, I need to watch another video on how to do this because I haven't seen someone do it in a really long time, to be honest. So don't listen to me, watch a video on this here YouTube. I pretty much just make sure that 
it's closed. Because once it starts cooking, it like cooks into the bird. Okay, so there's those. And then for the wings, I'm just gonna tuck them underneath. So I'm gonna turn the bird again so you can see what I'm talking about. So um, I'm just grabbing the wing and turning it underneath itself right here. And that's honestly so that they don't burn because they do burn very easily. And that's why I put the seasonings on the inside so that the chicken can get flavor but not burn. And then I'm just gonna kind of tuck them like that as well. All right, so everything is nice and tight in here. This is loose, but that's okay because that is gonna um, just crisp up and melt, which is really nice. And I'm just using parchment because I don't want the fat to burn on the bottom when it starts melting down there. And I'm just sprinkling it from really high because I'm trying to make it where it doesn't look like clumps everywhere but you can do whatever you want. It's your kitchen. And then I'm also just gonna put some black pepper on here. And then I actually meant to check before, but I did forget. I really want the chicken to be closer to the bottom of the oven than the top. Okay, so in this oven, uh, we're gonna do it at 450 for 10 minutes. This is called a hot start. And then we're gonna drop it down to 20 minutes per pound at 350, which for me is two hours and 20 minutes. Um, the racks, I have one rack at the very, very top because I don't wanna take it out of the oven. And then I have the other rack on the second from the bottom. So the very, very bottom um, like notches I just do that, just one up from that, and that way it can fit in there, because I want it to be closer to the bottom so that the top doesn't burn, because um, even with a hot start, you know, obviously we're like wanting to create extra heat, but I don't want to burn anything. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to keep an eye on it in that last 30 minutes of cooking, make sure it doesn't burn on the outside, um, and I'm going to get started on the side stuff right now. I'm going to do the roasted chicken. I'm actually going to make a garlic confit because I haven't made one in a really long time and it's been going all over TikTok. I'm like, okay, I'll make it again. Um, green beans and mashed potatoes. And then with the drippings from the pan, I'm hoping to make like a little gravy real quick. I think that sounds delicious. So we will get started on that. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and start the garlic confit. Um, I wanted to get bagged garlic because it's a little bit higher quality than this and you get more for the package, but they didn't have it at my HEB, so whatever. Um, so I got this. You can use uh, like heads of garlic as well. I just really didn't want to do that. So what I'm going to do here is take a paper towel and I'm just going to dump these on the paper towel 
because there's always a bit of liquid in this container. And this is kind of what I was talking about with like the quality, like you can see there's like a hole right there. This is a big boy right here. So I'm just gonna dry these because we're about to put them in oil. And this is better with fresh garlic that you're taking out of the head yourself. But like I said, I didn't want to do that. So here we are. And I'm just going to leave a few of these in the package. Um, I'm going to throw this guy away. And then I'm just going to cut the butts off of all of these. Okay, so I went ahead and cut the really thick ones off, but some of these, they aren't really thick, so that is cool. Um, this whole time, I thought I was using canola oil, but I'm using peanut oil, which is funny because I don't like using canola oil, so I was kind of like, hmm, when did my like opinion of that change? Um, so I am just putting some of this peanut oil in a pan. You can just use any oil that's your favorite that doesn't have a very strong flavor. And um, I'm just gonna heat this up right now. Okay, so my oil started heating up, so I'm just gonna put these in there. And this might be different from what you've seen online already, and that's because I'm just doing like a quick confit. I don't really want to do the oven method. Okay. I would say the oil right now, I can still touch it, so it's probably maybe 180 at the moment. Not that I want to touch it, but I, I could if I, if I had to touch it, because <laughs> I did just touch it. Perfect. So chicken timer just went off. I'm not opening the oven. I'm just turning the oven to 350, which is why I did 10 minutes. And then I'm going to set my timer for... I'll do two hours and that way I can check on it because I want to make sure that everything is going smoothly. So I think I can only do 90, 90 I'll do 90 minutes and I'll check it then just to make sure. Um, so the garlic here is bubbling. Let me show you guys. Okay, so our garlic is bubbling. So I'm going to go ahead and put my heat on a f like a little above a four. I think that was filming upside down. I put my heat a little above a four and I'm gonna add a little bit more oil so that it'll cover the big guys. And then I'm just gonna let this go low and slow for a while. Okay, so I went ahead and added the rest of the peanut oil, a little bit of olive oil, and I'm just gonna leave this hanging out um, at a three for 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna put it at a low, like very, very low for well, until the chicken's done. <laughs> okay, I have to show you guys. So this is the size of the potatoes I usually get in this package. Um, but like all of them are so little except for this big guy. Like I got him all the way from down here. There's like another big one. Um, I'm not upset or anything. I just think it's really funny because this potato is gigantic compared to these. Okay, the chicken is doing its little chicken thing in the oven. And I have a jar here so I can add this deliciousness. Um, let me see if I can show you guys. I can't, um, but you can kind of see it. They're just floating around in there. Um, I just left it on low for like 10, 20 minutes. Um, I'm gonna add salt to this. So I went ahead and got a funnel so I can go ahead and get all of this deliciousness in here. Hopefully I can just pour it this way. And it tastes really good. I already tasted the oil, so I'm very excited.
Whoops. Well, that's more difficult than it looks. Okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put these in here. And then this just lasts up to two weeks in the refrigerator. I'm gonna use a good bit of it today. And I already made a label for it. So that's perfect, okay. So I'm just gonna let it cool down on the counter all the way and then I'll put it in the fridge. And then I don't want to let too much heat out of here, but I do want to turn the chicken around. And it's looking beautiful, nice and crispy, not overdone. I'm gonna go ahead and check the temp. So I did it for 90, so I'll do 35. So the chicken's almost done. I'm gonna start doing the sides since I decided to do so many. Um, let me go ahead and chop the potatoes. So I went ahead and already washed them um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them in half. So I'm gonna cut them right here. And then I already have the pot of water right here to start cooking them. And I'm just gonna cut them into roughly the same size. Potatoes are very forgiving. And these are smaller, so to make them roughly the same size, I'm actually just cutting them in half and then cutting them into fours as well. And they'll be about the same size as the bigger one. And then with the last potatoes, I'm just gonna peel some of the skin off of them because I don't want too much skin in my mashed potatoes. Okay, so mostly peeled these.
Cool, so I'm just gonna put this on a high heat so I can bring it up to a boil very quickly. I'm gonna add a whole bunch of salt. So I'm gonna wait for this to boil. As soon as it starts boiling, I'm gonna leave it to boil on a little bit lower. I'm gonna put it on eight and I'm gonna leave it to boil for 10, or 10 minutes or so. And then I just have some corn and peas hanging out over here, kind of defrosting a little bit. Um, and th this is gonna be my other side. Whenever I was telling you guys what I was doing, I completely forgot that I wanna do this. I'm like craving this right now. Okay, so um, I just have some of these green beans that I'm gonna go ahead and steam. So I'm just gonna plug in the steamer and knock this off. Oops. Um, so what I like to do is go ahead and let this fill up with steam. And these are already like washed and trimmed and everything. Hey Alexa, set a timer for seven minutes. Seven minutes, starting now. So I'm gonna cook these for seven minutes. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Alexa, be quiet please. And then these I'm just gonna save for a different time. And then once these are done steaming, I'm gonna saute them in some butter and some of that delicious garlic situation. Okay. The timer just went off on the chicken, so I'm gonna pull it out so I can really check it. This just came up to a boil, so I'm gonna put it um, almost at an eight, and I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. I'm gonna move this handle out of the way so I can pull out this chicken. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the oven because I'm pretty sure that it's complete. Um, I'm like pretty sure. Okay, so here's our chicken. I would turn it around for you guys, but this is just gonna have to work. Um, so I'm gonna try to find a spot in here. This is one thing that I sometimes have trouble with. Okay, so that part's good. Let's check a booby. Perfect, okay, so this is good. I'm gonna go ahead and let it rest. So this ended up cooking for two hours. I think that it would have been okay to cook it a little bit less, um, but it's all right, it's not gonna, nothing bad is gonna happen. It's still going to be very juicy because it cooked with the bones. Bone-in chicken is just, there's so much wiggle room, it's amazing. So I went ahead and set my chicken aside so that I can mess with what I'm hoping is to make a like chicken gravy. So I have here one cup of chicken broth and then I have the chicken drippings. This did not all come from the chicken. I um, put a little bit of chicken broth, like a fourth of a cup or so, in with it in its last 10 minutes of cooking just so it would like kind of steam with the chicken. I don't know. Ideas were had. <sighs> so I'm gonna try to get this into this cup. It's seeping a little bit through the paper. Paper isn't really meant to be cooking with stuff like this. And 
and honestly it did not leak too bad so i really got to save like almost all the juices easily alexa be quiet so that was the timer for the green beans i'm gonna just turn that off and open the lid and that way they can just hang out until i want to saute them okay so i moved the peas and corn peas and corn out of the way that's kind of funny peas and corn um And I'm gonna go ahead and put this pan on a seven and I'm gonna use a little bit of this oil from the garlic. And then I did have a stick of butter just softening here because I'm gonna need it for all this. And I want to use these green onions in the mashed potatoes, so I'm going to bring those out. And I'm just going to put a little bit of onions in this pan, not too much. bring out the milk, the cream, the sour cream, because it is about to be on and popping in this kitchen. So for the mashed potatoes, I'm gonna do like a half and half mixture, but not half and half, I'm gonna do two ounces of milk, like 2.2. And then the rest of this cup, I'm gonna do heavy cream. I do have some parsley, so I'm actually gonna get that out as well. And with this heavy cream mixture, I'm just gonna put it in the microwave for a little bit just to take the chill off. And my timer's almost up for the potatoes. Hey baby, are you in the middle of the game? Huh? Are you in the middle of the game? Yeah. When you're done with that one, can you come here real quick? Okay, so the potato timer just went off and they actually are done. So I'm gonna take them off, drain them, and then I'll be right back to them. So I went ahead and removed the pan that I was making the gravy in because I didn't want the onions to burn and I'm just gonna do this really quick. Um, so I'm gonna put this on a low heat and I wanna dry out the pan. And then we're gonna put the potatoes in and dry those out too. So the potatoes can soak up all of the cream and the butter and just be amazing. And I like to smash them a little bit in this 
time and that way they can really dry out. And I'm also just going to put a few cloves of the comfy garlic in here with a little bit of the oil. And that oil is just taking the place of a little bit of the butter that would have been in here either way. I'm just putting some butter in here to start melting. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the cream. I'm just gonna do it a little slow and that way we can slowly incorporate Make sure we don't add too much cream. And I will be adding pepper to this, but I'm waiting for Brandon to come and uh, crack some more for me because I would actually just prefer him to do it right now. And you can tell that they need a little bit more because it kind of sticks like hard to this. It's soft, but it's not like enough. Okay, so I went ahead and added the rest of the cream because it could take it. And then I'm also gonna add some sour cream because it's kind of like a sour cream and green onion situation. And that tastes really good in there. Um, you can use more or less depending on what you think about sour cream. And the sour cream has a date on it but I like to write dates on stuff like this because it helps me keep up with like how long does it last like once it's open and stuff like that. It's just helpful to me. I'm gonna knock that over, who else? <laughs> and the heat's just been on a low this whole time just to make sure that everything is staying at a good solid temperature. So I'm gonna add that black pepper in just a little bit whenever he is done. He's just in the middle of the game. So he is a little preoccupied right now. <laughs> And these are still pretty thick, but we're gonna add the gravy on top. So this is perfect consistency. And then um, I bought some green onion to put on top of that. So I'm gonna cut this up in just a minute. I just wanna make the gravy. I just want to taste these really quick just to check the seasoning. I went ahead and brought my flour over here. I've talked about this before. My flour in the fridge is in a very precarious spot, so this is going to have to work. Mm. Texture, so good. A little bit of salt. Just a little. So nice. Oh, why'd I do that? 
Oh my god. Okay. So I'm gonna put the heat on a six. And I'm gonna put a little bit more butter in here. Just a little bit. If you're only using butter and not the comfy oil, it'd be about three tablespoons. These potatoes are delicious. You still need meat? Yes, please. Here, let me move this stuff over really quick. It's like she always thinks I'm not here anymore, like in this building. Whenever you are playing your game or what? Yeah. Dude, you gotta taste these. Blow them, they're really hot. Mmm. That's nice. Isn't that great? It is. Look at this. Delicious chicken -y goodness. Smell it. Mm. You could drink that. Shouldn't though, because... Wait, you just came in here to give me... Potatoes? No, I'm yeah. moving all this shit so you can get some... Uh, fucking... What's it called? What am I talking about? Um, pepper for me. You may grind up some pepper? Yes, please. Where's the thingy to this one? Hold on. Wait, I'm not done moving. Oh, we're recording. Would you guys like to see my sunburn? <laughs> sure, you can show them. Here's my gnarly sunburn. This light's not going to make it any different. That doesn't look terrible on fucking camera, but you know. It's not. It goes better whenever you, uh, like, whenever you're done. Okay. Here, grab the pepper from up there. Do you want to keep this peppercorn container? Yes, I'm going to use it for vanilla. Okay, so I'm going to add about three tablespoons of flour to this. And Brandon is just doing cracked pepper right now. Peppercorn stuff. <laughs> I think I added a little bit too much. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the oil. gonna cook this flour for a bit just to get some of that taste out I was watching a video today and they didn't really cook the flour before they added the chicken stock and stuff and I was like that's extremely weird but okay okay so this is ready for the liquid I'm probably gonna need more liquid than this but this is what I'm going with at the moment. And then I'm just going to simmer this for two to three minutes. That's actually a pretty good texture so far. So let's see where it goes. Hey, don't grind it into nothing. Huh? Yeah, that's enough. Thank you so much. What? All right. And the food's ready, so you can go smoke, go smoke a cigarette real quick. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and add pepper to the gravy and the potatoes. And this gravy is good, yes. So I'm gonna put it to the side. And I'm just gonna add a little cream to it, just a little bit. And then I'm just going to heat up this peas and corn. And I'm just doing it in the same pan that I did the confit garlic. Whoopsies. <laughs> Mitzi, you want to eat some peas and corn, baby? I got you some. Here you go, mate. So let's go ahead and do the green beans after I get butter off of my glasses. So I'm just going to use some of this oil. And two of these. Wow. I just had a whole bite of mashed potatoes with like one clove of the comfy garlic. It was amazing. And I'm just heating up these peas and corn gently over here, just in a low heat. I'm gonna smash this garlic. And I'm gonna put a little bit of the seasoning in there. I keep trying to see if I can find this again at Marshall's, but I can't find it. I know it exists other places, but the Marshall's is where I bought it. <laughs> All right, so I'm just waiting for this to get hot, which it's not going to because I forgot to turn on the burner. <laughs> oh, I'm so silly. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and cut up these little herbs. All right, so I'm just going to cut up these little onions. Oops, please come back. Please come back.
Okay, so this is gonna be perfect for the potatoes. And then I'm just gonna put these little guys over here. Perfect. And they're already cooked, I'm just getting a char on them. And while that's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some parsley. There's some lost soldiers every time I stir this. If you haven't had peas and corn ever, or in a long time, do it again. It's time. So I don't want chicken juice all over the counter. I'm gonna do this and create a little catch, just in case, because it will start getting very juicy. And a lot of juices came off the chicken when it was resting, so I'm just gonna put those in the gravy. Perfection. I'm just gonna heat it up really quick and put it on low, just so it'll heat up. Okay, so the chicken. So let's get this very dry truss off. And then I like to go for the leg. And then for the breasts, I just go like this, just slice by the um, bone, and then keep going down. And 
and then oh shit I almost dropped this yeah. and then there's a breast this meat that is under here is perfection And then here's what the corn and peas end up looking like. They're super buttery and taste amazing. Check out this chicken. So here's one use of the leftovers. Um, this is the chicken cooked down with the gravy and then I just heated up the mashed potatoes and mixed the peas and corn in there. And then I actually made new green beans with garlic and onions because we ate all of them. So this is what's for dinner tonight. Yesterday we actually just went to McDonald's to split it up a little bit.